one. It just took me a minute to figure this out, so I figured I would share it with you. I looked online briefly and found a bunch of complex, vague, useless solutions. So this is the easy way. If you want to take a sample such as water, wind, anything sustained that has no start or end that you want to use as an effect in a game, like for example the environment, uh, this is how to make it loop cleanly. If for example the amplitude or anything about the beginning of the waveform is uh, different than the end. Basically allows you to uh, have the beginning and end fade smoothly into each other so it can be looped, um, looped infinitely. So we're going to be using Audacity here uh, to edit our sample. Our sample is going to be a uh, water sound effect that I recorded at the Yellow River uh, here in Stone Mountain. So this, as you can see, is a summary of how to do it, how to create a sustained effect loop from an arbitrary sample. Number one, cut and paste, beginning and end to new tracks. Um, the beginning and end, uh, basically, let's say you want the first five seconds, you know, to be the fade and the last five seconds to be the fade. That'd be the beginning five seconds and the ending five seconds of uh, your sample that you start with. Basically, you move the beginning and end tracks to the end of the first track. So they start when the first track ends. Um, because you're cutting them here, um, that's going to shorten the uh, initial sample by the length of the beginning and the ending tracks. Um, next up, number three, uh, you fade in the separate beginning track that you would cut and paste it into a new track. Uh, then you similarly fade out the end track, um, which is the end of the original sample that you would cut out and paste it into a new track. Um, and then you just save it. That's pretty much it. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way. Okay, I'm going to drag and drop the water sample that I have here. Um, It's actually the original sample that's four minutes long. So what I'm going to do is cut this at the 115 mark, which if I remember is when the bird sound effects came in. So I just using the keyboard here, just go ahead and slice that up a little bit, uh, zoom in some. Okay, so this starts rough, it ends rough, it's just chopped up, and the end doesn't quite match the beginning. So if you, if you looped this the way it was, you'd be able to tell when the end here went back to the beginning. It would be somewhat noticeable. Um, so one thing to decide when you're doing this is exactly how long you want the fade to last, where basically the beginning and the end of the file are playing simultaneously with uh, one fading in and one fading out. Um, five seconds is pretty good, but it really depends on your taste. You don't want to make it too long, or it's going to sound kind of chaotic uh, having the two sound effects played on top of each other for a long period of time, so let's use five seconds. Okay shrink this up some so we can see what's going on and then a little I'm gonna hit up the five second mark here and go ahead and cut that it's important that you cut it it has to be gone from the original track don't copy it so control X okay click down here control V for paste all right now what was once the beginning here is now down here so this is the actual beginning, it plays to here, the five second mark, then it would jump back here, where it was cut from. Alrighty, now we do the same thing to the end. So this is again the five second mark. Go ahead and clip off, control X, last five seconds of the file. Click back down here again, paste. So this is the middle of the original sample. This is the first five seconds, which were cut from here. This is the last five seconds, which was cut from here. Okie doke. Now, we move both of these, select this uh, time shift tool here, move both of these all the way to the end. It's important that you get the snap right when that little yellow line comes up. If they don't snap, you're going to have a problem. Okay, so the beginning has been moved here, the end has been moved here. Now for the fading, which is pretty much the last step. So we take the beginning track, oops, select the selection tool there, double click. So the beginning, which was once here, is now selected. 
we're going to fade that in. So just go to Effect, Fade In. We're going to select the end of the original sample, the last five seconds. And in this, we're going to fade out. OK. Again, this is the middle of the original sample. This is the first five seconds, which are fading in. These are the last five seconds, which are fading out. And the final step, which is super difficult, is to uh, go to File, Export, whatever you want. I'm going to call it Crap. And save it. Yes, down mix, please. It's mono anyway. And you're done. The uh, final effect here. There's crap. There it is. Final effect here <coughs> is uh, going to be able to be looped continuously um, with no sort of pop or noticeable change between the beginning <coughs> of the original sample and the end of the original sample. There will be a five-second period um, where they smoothly fade into each other. Um, obviously, you still have a hard start and a hard stop. So with effects like these, these would be something that in-game, programmatically, you know, with the audio programming, uh, you would need to start at zero and smoothly fade in. You know, for example, when someone starts playing the game um, <coughs> and actually manipulate based on their proximity to the source of the sound effect. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you find it useful and see you.